Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be seeing the third part of this induction question. In fact, this third part actually doesn't require induction, although it's a good exercise in a harder three-unit type question. Right, so again we're working with the Fibonacci sequence and you can read all the details of the Fibonacci sequence. And we're required to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of tn plus 1 over tn is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. So what we're looking for is the limit of a term to its previous term as n approaches infinity. And we're looking to, find, uh, to show that it's equal to this number here. Okay, so... Alright. The first step is to assume that it approaches a finite limit. So, assume... Tm plus 1 over Tn approaches a finite limit. Now we need to assume that it's finite because otherwise if we had infinities it'd be a bit more difficult to work with. So assume it approaches a finite limit. Okay, so let's call this limit phi. So let this limit be phi. Okay, and so therefore we have this statement. So we're just putting what we have here into a mathematical sentence. So tm plus 1 over tn. So the limit as n approaches infinity of it is equal to phi. Okay, now we know from our definition of the Fibonacci sequence, which you should uh, go back and have a look at, we know that tn plus 2 is equal to tn plus 1 plus tn, right? So this is saying that any term is equal to the sum of the previous two terms. But this is exactly equivalent to saying that tn plus 1 is equal to tn plus tn minus 1. This is the exact same thing. So let's just say that this implies this because all this is saying is that a term is equal to the one before it plus the one before that. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, and the reason we do this is so that we can now divide through by tn on both sides. And we get this. tn plus 1 over tn is equal to... tn over tn is simply 1. And tn minus 1 over tn is what we have here. Okay, now we can take the limit as n approaches infinity of both sides here, because this is what we're looking for. We're trying to find this value. We're trying to find, find what phi is, which is trying to find this value. So, take the limit as n approaches infinity. And what do we get? Okay, so we get the limit as n approaches infinity of tn plus 1 over tn. Now, that's equal to the limit of this, which is a limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus tn minus 1 over tn. Okay, now here we have a limit of a sum, and this is equal to the sum of the limits. So we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus the limit as n approaches infinity of t of n minus 1 over t of n. Alright, now, the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 is simply 1, since 1 is not dependent on n. And this limit here, we can rewrite this term in a slightly different way. So the limit as n approaches infinity, now let's write this fraction here, as 1 over its reciprocal. So we're taking the reciprocal of a reciprocal, which doesn't change anything. So we have 1 over tn over tn minus 1. Okay. Now, here we have a limit of a quotient, which is equal to the quotient of the limits, provided that the bottom limit is not equal to 0. So I guess our assumption also takes into case that 
phi is not equal to zero, but we can note that during this step. So we have here the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the limit as n approaches infinity of t of n over t of n minus 1 provided that this limit is non-zero. Okay? So if it was zero, we'd be dividing by zero, and we all know that we can't do that. Okay, so, continuing, we see here that we have the limit of a term divided by its previous term. But up here in this, in the beginning of the question, we let that equal to phi. So we defined that the limit as n approaches infinity of a term over its previous term, that's equal to phi. So here, we can say that this is equal to 1 plus, now the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 is again 1 because it's not dependent on n. But here, this is equal to phi. And the reason is, again, because it's the limit as n approaches infinity of a term over the term before it. Right, and but this was equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of t n plus 1 over t n. Okay, so this is what we're working with now. But this as well is equal to phi. This is equal to phi by definition. Right, so this is phi here because it's the limit of a term to the previous term as n approaches infinity. 1 over 1, 1 plus 1 over phi. Now we just have to solve this for phi. So if we multiply everything by phi, we're going to get phi squared equals phi plus 1. And then we get, have a quadratic. When we, when we move these two terms to the other side, we have phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals to 0. And we can simply use the quadratic formula here. So we'll have phi equals minus b, which is minus minus 1, or positive 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 1 squared is 1, minus 4 times 1, times minus 1, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Right? And this is equal to 1 plus or minus... Here we have uh, 1 minus 4 times minus 1, which is 1 plus 4, which is the square root of 5, over 2. Okay, now, if phi is equal to this, we're pretty close. What we wanted was to prove that phi was 1 plus root 5 over 2. But here we have that phi is equal to 1 plus or minus root 5 on 2. So how do we eliminate this uh, negative here? How do we show that 1 minus root 5 over 2 is not a solution to phi? Well, you note that, so note, the Fibonacci sequence contains positive terms. Right? So if we're dividing positive terms, no matter how large the terms are, or how small the terms are, we're always going to get a positive value. So therefore, tn plus 1 over tn is greater than or equal to 0, depending on the value of tn plus 1, uh, regardless of n. Right? And so therefore, if it's regardless of n, phi has to also be greater than or equal to 0. And so therefore we can eliminate the 1 minus root 5 over 2 solution and get therefore phi, which is the limit as n approaches infinity of tn plus 1 over tn is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. Right, And there we've shown what we need to show. Now a quick... Uh, Note here, this number is actually known as the golden ratio, and that's one of the amazing properties of the Fibonacci sequence, is that as n becomes 
large or increasingly large, the ratio of a term to the previous term is in fact the golden ratio. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video.